Young Todd Gillen has come in and dominated this race. The only person that gave him any real fight this evening was the one of Ben Kennedy. As we go back to green, you'll notice Kennedy is not there. He's all the way back in 17th. Let's let this fight for the lead settle, and then we'll tell you what happened. And just like that, Gillen's back out front. So during the caution, Kennedy had a fuel pickup problem, stalled the car, got it going, but then he just has to, ooh, hang on. Big problems here as the 66 gets up into the wall. That's Reed Wilson. That settles down. So Kennedy gets going, but Brandon, he lost a ton in probably the race with just five to go. Yeah, absolutely. Todd Gillen's had that short run speed, tough break for Ben Kennedy. It seems like he was the only one that could hang with the 16 of Todd Gillen. Chase Purdy running up there in second, but just hasn't had the car and the short run speed to be able to keep up with those two guys. Final few laps of this one, and these guys are really letting it all go. Fighting for seventh is Derek Krause, who started on the pole. Ronnie Bassett's in that group as well. Ruben Garcia Jr. in the six. Yeah, Jesse Little in the one. He's working hard. Jesse knows how to get around this racetrack, trying to work that middle groove up underneath the 19. These guys are battling really hard, trying to get every last Ooh. spot that they can. Kennedy brushes the wall coming off the four. Yeah, I know Ben's got to be frustrated with having that mechanical issue coming to that last restart, feeling like he had a shot to win this race, and he did. He was right up there in the middle of it, trying to push really hard here at the end of the race, coming back to three to go. Trying to find the right lane, shooting through the middle. That gap stays open. Here he comes. Got through one gap, now the other one. Great move by Ben Kennedy. Yeah, he got a heck of a run. It looked like he gave up a little bit of entry speed, shot the middle, and got that good drive off. And uh, he's on to the next one with the 04 right up in front of him. Meanwhile, Todd Gillen looking to make a huge statement in the East and West points. He will get credited with the victory in both series if he can hang on for two more laps. Yeah, he's got a really demanding lead right now. It's just about no mistakes. Stay off that wall even when you're running the outside. Todd, he's been the man to beat here the last two years, uh, just trying to see if he cl can close it out. But as a driver, you're, you're sitting there making laps. You know that you're racing all by yourself, but you're worried that something might go wrong, flat tire, mechanical issues. So no mistakes here in the last lap. One to go. This will be his third win in the East, his fifth win in the West. Good move for Todd running the bottom right there, just making sure he can stay off that outside wall. One more corner, just got to be perfect down here. And on back to the check. It's been a great season for Todd Gillen so far in that Bill McAnally Racing Organization and a spectacular night in Iowa as he just dominates to Casey's General Storm 150, taking the win. And Ben Kennedy, as frustrated as he has to be, because he had a shot at the win, will battle back to finish seventh as he picks up 10 spots when the race gets going again. Well, Todd Gillen will make his way to victory lane to celebrate, and we'll be there with him when we return. K&N Pro Series Racing and NBCSN is brought to you by K&N High Flow Air Filters and Air Intake Systems, because everyone loves that fast car smell. Well, when it comes to fast cars, there was none quicker here today than that one, the 16 of Todd Gilliland. And it is back in victory lane at Iowa Speedway. So is our Derek Pernisiglio. Todd Gilliland goes back to back. He won at New Hampshire, and now he wins at Iowa in the East-West combination event. Wins it again this year, and now joins Brandon McReynolds as multiple winners of this event. Todd, come on over here. We've got to talk to you. Here we go. Todd, the car was absolutely perfect all night. Were you worried about anybody behind you? Yes. Um, you know, ben Kennedy right there in that one car was really fast. Um, you know, it's, it's ironic that's my uh, truck crew chief's car um, at KBM, so I um, knew it was going to be fast, but um, I'm not sure what problem he had there, but um, I was pretty sure we could hold him off anyway. Uh, you know, this thing was, it would fire off so good um, after a restart 
started. It would get a little free after that. But, um, man, these guys back here give me the best car ever um, every week. Um, if I don't... <laughs> oh, here comes Chase Purdy with the ice water. <laughs> a big hug from him. Chase is kind of like your quasi-teammate, but he almost got you on the restart. Were you getting worried with Chase getting close to you? And also, on the restarts, how do you get so good at them? You're able to take off from the rest of the field and never spin the tires. Yeah, you know, it comes from a lot of bad restarts in late models and everything. And, um, you know, we went out to Ace Speedway in North Carolina and practiced restarts for all one day. I used to miss shifts, spin my tires and all that. But, um, you know, that's why we did that stuff. That's why we prepare the ways we did. And, um, you know, for, for times like this, when, um, you know, it really counts at the end. And, um, like I said, can't thank everyone at Napa Auto Parts, Frontline Enterprises. Um, you know, David Lewis, our motor guy, he uh, definitely gives good, uh, good horsepower for tonight. Well, it looks like practice makes perfect. Todd Gillen picks up yet another win here at Iowa. Boy, there's his dad, David, celebrating with him. Then Kennedy comes by to say hello as well. So here's a look at the results. I'm still amazed at Ben. It was 17th at the green, raced all the way up to 7th. Outstanding effort and a debut for that squad. Yeah, absolutely. Great run for Kevin Bonomanian. I know he's looking forward to this race. Ben Kennedy he was on the charge. Tough break and late going, but a strong return there coming home seven. Our poll winner, Derek Krause, ended up finishing 11th. Trey Hutchins in 30th. How about Vinny Miller? He was all over the wheel, fell back to 26th at the end of the night. Yeah, he was running good all night long. Tough break at the end, but uh, good speed out of that car. Let's go back down to Derek. Well, Chase Purdy used Old Faithful to come home to a second-place finish. Challenged Todd Gilliland there at the end, and did you think that that was going to be your only shot at it? Uh, well, yeah, I kind of figured that was going to be our only shot. Um, I think with about 10 to go, we had a restart, and I didn't quite get the jump that I wanted. I just anticipated it wrong, and then I got lucky with about five to go, we were going to get a restart. So uh, I was real pumped up about that. Um, I knew I had to come in clutch, and I feel like I got a really good run on Todd. And going in, I knew I had to beat him through the first corner, and if I didn't beat him through the first corner, I wasn't going to get him. He just rolled the center better than I did and just got up off the corner better. But uh, I know hats off to those guys and my teammate Todd and all of Dave, Gill Dave Gillen Racing and uh, Textron Off Road, Ben on Buggies, all the people that support me. Uh, my family's here, so that's great. I Pretty sure I put it on a show for him. There was uh, some tight moments in there, but uh, it was a fun. I had a blast. This place is awesome. And uh, I'll like come back uh, here soon. Chase Purdy knocking on the door of Victory Lane. He's going to get one this year. I think you could be right about that, Derek. Look at this. Gilliland has reeled in Burton just six between the two in the east. Yeah, really tight points battle. I know Harrison didn't have the run that he wanted tonight, but good job getting a strong run there. Then probably fighting a little bit of handling issues, but uh, it's definitely getting close here with a few races left. Then on the west, he stretches it out over Eggleston. Yeah, definitely a two-horse race. Chris Eggleston just 18 back. It'll still be a tight points battle coming down to the end. Let's hear from Chris now as Derek has made his way to his car. Well, Chris Eggleston has a good run in a brand-new car. Started second on the outside pole. Ends up coming home with a podium finish. And what happened during the course of the race? You backed up a little bit and then came back to the front. Well, I mean, the first off, I mean, I'm so embarrassed by those restarts. We just couldn't get going. I don't know if our uh, gearbox was different than everybody else, but we just struggled to get going. And, uh... Uh, I thought we were good on the short runs, and we rallied up to third there, um, and then we just started getting super, super free. I mean, I feel like you and I talked about we were so tight in practice all day, and the tr sun went down and got so free. And, uh, man, the end of that first segment, I'm just, like, praying, like, stop the bleeding because we are fading like a rock. Uh, came and got tires. Uh, everybody on the Bill McNally Racing Napa Filters Toyota team uh, made decent adjustments. We were still way too free for the second segment. The only thing that kind of saved us were those restarts and uh, line choice on the outside, and uh, we're kind of able to rebound to a third-place finish. Well, Chris Eggleston has said he's had no luck here in the past, and it looks like tonight he may have turned the corner with his fortunes here at the Iowa Speedway. Well, the next race up on our schedule is the Bully Hill Vineyards 100. That comes away from the road course at Watkins Glen, New York. That'll be the k Pro Series East event. Well, two